everyone, it's Kelly from Kelly's Bead Boutique. So I guess you know by now that I have a problem. I have a problem with leather and barrel knots because I use them on everything. I just think that it's a really um, beautiful element and you can create so many different things with it. So that's what I'm gonna do today. Now, one of the questions that I get asked a lot is, well, where do I buy your kits? Or where can I buy XYZ? Well, I just wanted to mention that if you are watching a video of mine and you see me using a product, I sell that product. I have a huge store over 2000 square feet and it's full to the brim of everything you'd ever need. And if you go down into the description box just below the video, it's a little different on a PC versus a, a phone, but it should be you know, fairly easy to find. So you just drop down into the description box and there will be a link that will take you directly to my store. Generally, it's a link that takes you to the kit that I'm providing for the video, uh, but you can kind of look around and see that way. We ship all over the world. Our shipping is fairly reasonable even though I'm in Canada because Canada has horrendous shipping costs but I do my best to keep my prices down and if you happen to live in the United States it's your bonus because <laughs> our dollar stinks right now it is terrible which means that you're gonna save almost 40% when you buy something so that is such a great deal so I just wanted to let everybody know how you can actually purchase the things that I'm using in my videos so if you want to see what I'm making today come and join me Okay, so I have about two and a half meters of one millimeter leather, and I have a few of these little curved tubes, and these are smaller than our barrel knot tube, and we do need one of those. I also have a small button, and I have some six aught Mayuki seed beads, and these ones are a really pretty matte rainbow mix. And for tools today, I'm just gonna be using a pair of scissors, a ruler, and we're also gonna be using a little bit of GS Hypo cement. So let's get started. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my button and I am going to place my leather through the shank of the button. Now I want to run that leather down about uh, 30 inches. So I'm going to go about 12, 24, and 30. So I'm just pulling it along so I've got 30 inches on one side and all the remaining leather on the other side. And it does not have to be an exact measurement. So now I'm gonna take my leather and I wanna always have my longest piece on the top. So the 30 inches is the one that you're just gonna be placing things onto, but the long one is the one that you're gonna wrap with. And that's really important that you remember to do that. So now I'm gonna take one of my barrel knot tubes and I'm going to place it in between the leather and I'm gonna take the one on top and I'm going to grab it from underneath and pull it around to the front and I'm gonna wrap it once, twice, three times and I'm gonna pull that leather out. You wanna make sure that you're going three complete times. Now I'm gonna take the end of that and I'm gonna put it through the back end of the tube and I'm gonna pull the tube off and now you can see that's where the leather comes. Now I always have to keep hold of that knot otherwise it ends up all over the place so you can't really see what I'm doing until I get this um, a little bit tightened up. Okay, so now I've got my three wraps and you can see they're in a nice row. You wanna make sure that they're not crossing over each other. And now I'm going to pull this down until it sort of tightens up. But I need to move that up a little bit because I don't wanna have a great big huge gap there. So I'm just sort of pushing and pulling with my thumbnail until I get it where I want. And you wanna leave about a quarter of an inch and now I'm gonna tighten it up. So you tighten it up with the one that you were wrapping with. And I don't want to pull so tight that I break my leather. This is only one millimeter leather, so it's not super fragile, but you could break it if you pull too tight. Okay, so now that's what I've got. So now on one side, I'm going to put three of my Mayuki seed beads, and on the other side, I'm going to put three. Now this is just a random uh, color grouping here, so I don't want to really be too careful about the colors that I grab. The other two that are available are gonna be these beautiful Picasso beads, and I do actually have a pattern in that one. So I will show you um, when I'm done the different patterns that I have. But I have had a lot of people ask me to get a bit more colorful with my jewelry because I tend to use the same colors over and over again, as you will notice in the Picasso beads. Um, so I'm just trying something a little bit different here. So uh, we'll see how this one turns out. Okay, so I've got my three beads on each side. Now I need to determine which one is my long one. So this one's my short, so I'm gonna turn it over. So I've got my long on top, and I'm gonna place my barrel knot tube between those. And now I'm gonna wrap once, twice, three times. Now, 
One of the problems that um, people have is with this one millimeter leather, it is tiny and it can be really challenging to do these knots. Um, even I have a hard time. So I find there's a couple things that I do. One is I keep my fingers on the knot. The second is I make sure, see how that one's wanting to pull up? It's wanting to go up and over. So I make sure that I'm watching where those knots are supposed to be and I'm pulling with my fingers so that they're not going out of shape. So this is where it usually goes wrong. I can see that middle one is wanting to go a bit rogue on me. So I just kind of manipulate it around with my fingers until I have, have it where I want it. So what I want to do is put just a little bit of pressure because I want these to slightly go into an oval like that. Okay. So now I'm going to take both of my ends. Now this is a really good tip and I'm going to just match them up because one's way longer than the other and I'm going to just go on a sharp angle with my scissors and cut that. You will find it a lot easier to do this next step if you do that. So now I, by matching them up you will also uh, make it a lot easier to put them in too. So I'm going to put both of these in and push that through. Now I want to pull the long one first because it's of course the hardest one to get in there because there's just so much length. So I just kind of pull them. I don't want to put any stress on this leather so I am very careful when I'm pulling it through the metal. So then when I get it down here I just kind of there we go. I just got to pull that a little bit tight. There we go. So now we have our little tube on there. So now we're going to do another barrel knot. So I want to determine which one is my long one. So it's this one up here. So I'm going to do a barrel knot. So I always pull that down and around, working towards my left hand. I'm going to go three times and make sure that you're pulling it right under so that you've got three full wraps. And it's a lot of leather here because this is a long bracelet. This is a triple wrap. So I do find it easier if I pop this out now versus trying to get it off later. It's just an extra step that I don't really want to have to deal with. Okay, so here's another issue is I purposely started this way over. When it's way over like this, you'll find it a lot harder to scoosh it down. Um, so try to keep your barrel knots on top of this, like coming in a little bit closer because you will find that a lot harder. So what I do is just kind of keep moving them down with my fingers. But if you don't want to have to worry about this so much, just go a little bit closer. So you can see I'm not really pulling too hard. I'm getting it into place and then I'm tightening it up. Okay, so now we're going to repeat with our beads. So I'll take, and I'm just kind of picking any random kind of colors here. And I kind of like these little um, matte rainbow ones. They're sort of pretty. It's really, this is super out of my comfort zone. I know that sounds ridiculous, but um, I, uh, I really do have a very, I don't know if it's a boring palette. <laughs> I mean, I guess we could call it boring, <laughs> but I just really like, um, I like palettes that are a little softer on the eye. I tend not to like the bright colors. So this is really out of my comfort zone. Okay. So this one is my short one on top. So I'm just going to flip it over. Okay. So I'm going to take my long one and pull it under, wrap around once, twice, three times. And you can probably see I got really close to the beads this time to make it a little bit easier. I always try to give you as many tips and tricks as I can to make your uh, jewelry making adventures a little easier. Let me do all the hard work and figure out all the things that are they're the hardest part of jewelry and then I will try to pass those along. Okay so I pull those beads down so that they're in a little grouping and then I'm going to push this into place. And once I get it into place I'm going to tighten that up. Again I'm not pulling super hard on that leather. So that's what we have. So I'll put one more on and then I will show you how to finish this bracelet. So I match up my two ends because it does make it a little bit easier to go in there and push that through and then pull that down. And then you want to have them right next to the um, barrel knots. So I have to find my long one and that's my short one. So I just always, I just turn it over. I find it easier to do it that way. And I can be sure of having the long one on top. Okay, so now the way that you can get that closer is by kind of going halfway like that. 
So I'm going to do my barrel knot pretty close to that other tube. Pull that right straight to the front. Grab the end, put it through the back side. Always make sure you're going through the back end, otherwise you'll have a piece of leather over top of your knots. And sometimes people say, well, there wasn't enough leather, and it's because they've added a piece there by going over top, and that will um, make it so that you don't have enough leather on some of the projects. Okay, so I'll do one more section here of the beads, and then I will show you how to finish this off. I just want you to have a bit more of a look of the, uh, the way that we're doing this. I can hear so much traffic today. Goodness, I'm right on a busy highway here, and it is so noisy out there today. Just trying to find some other colors. I'm trying to be random, but I'm not good at random. <laughs> I always end up doing some kind of a pattern. <laughs> okay. And this one is my long one. So I'll put my barrel knot tube between. And I'm going to go once, twice, three times. Put that through the back end and pull that through. So you want to pull your beads down. And then that one I can see is wanting to go over. I don't know if you can see that. But when it does that, it's really frustrating and I hate having to take these knots out. Okay, so this is what this is one's gonna look like if you're interested in the um, purchasing a kit. This is what the matte rainbow is gonna look like. I think it's kind of fun. It's just a little bit different. So that's this one. So now I'm gonna trade over to one that I've almost finished because these do take um, a little bit of time to make and I'm sure you don't wanna sit here watching me make the whole thing. So I'm gonna swap this out and come back with one that I almost finished yesterday. Okay, so here's one that I almost finished last night. Uh, you can see that it's gonna go around my wrist three times and that does take a little bit of time to do. So this one is in our beautiful cobalt blue Picasso with the yellow Picasso and I love this combination. I'm not even a yellow person yet I love it mixed with this. So I'm gonna finish this off by putting my last tube on. Now all leathers are a little different. This one is a lot thinner than the other one so it goes through much easier. Uh, you just never know with the leather so some are going to be easier than others. This one slips through really super simple. Um, we will make sure that of course your leather does go through before you get your kit. Okay so I'm going to put my last one on there and I'm going to find my long piece which is this one here and I'm going to wrap that up and I will discuss the um, the measuring in a little bit here. And now I can hear that the guy next door is sawing. So between trucks and motorcycles and sawing, this might be a really noisy video. And I do apologize, but um, I'm still not quite ready with my home studio. Uh, COVID kind of threw a monkey wrench in that. And I just got my countertop installed last week. So should be getting there pretty close. And then it's nice and quiet there. Well, sort of, you know, if people aren't mowing lawns and stuff, but. Okay, so now I'm gonna finish my last little bit of beads. So I've got my two blue cobalt, my yellow, and then my other two blue cobalt. And I love these Picasso beads. They're just, they're probably the beads that we sell the most in the store. Thankfully, we found a new supplier and I can always have them in stock because it's hard when they go out of stock all the time. Okay, so that's our last one there. So I'm going to make sure I've got my long one on top, which I do. I always want to wrap with that long one. Bring it around once, twice, three times. Always working towards my left hand. Bring that tail in and then pull that tight. And it takes me a second to kind of get it in there and then I tighten it up. Okay. Okay, so now I'm gonna measure for my button. 
So I want to take my button and I'm going to place it in between the leather or close by and I know that I need to have my button at least about this big. Now I want to make sure when I'm doing this one that I'm not making it too small. I do find these really hard to get off and on with these small buttons if you have it too tight. So I want to leave myself at least that much room. So I want to make sure my long one is on top so I'm just going to turn that over and then I'm going to do another barrel knot here. So I'm going to wrap that around three times and I'm going to put this through the back end here. And then just pull that little tube off. And what I like to do is take my thumbnail and place it right where I want my button to, um, or my buttonhole to be. Before I tighten that up, I'm just going to measure again. And I can see that's going to be just about right. So I take my thumbnail and I place it right there. And that's where I'm going to push my knot next to so that it doesn't move down because you don't have any beads or anything in the uh, way to stop it. So now that's going to be perfect. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about sizing. As you can tell, it's a really hard one to size because we've got this long tube and we've got these little beaded sections. So we have to take that into account when we're creating our bracelet. So my own bracelet, uh, because I have a seven and a half inch wrist and it's going to go around my wrist three times, that's a total of 22 and a half inches. Now I want to add about an extra inch for a little bit of comfort because when you do wrap things around your wrist three times, like in this other bracelet I've got here, it takes up a little extra room so you don't want to have it tight. So that gives me a total of 23 and a half inches. So that would be 11 sections of these beads and 10 of the tubes and that gives me enough to do a seven and a half inch bracelet. If you've got a six and a half inch uh, wrist, that's a total three times around is 19 and a half inches and, a, and then you want to add that one inch on it which gives you about 20 and a half inches. So with that one you may have to actually stop like so you might have to get to um, you're going to take this whole section off probably and you'll stop at this one here so you would only have then like maybe 10 sections and nine tubes but maybe that's not going to be quite enough for you. So you sort of have to think about how, what would you do if this bracelet didn't exactly fit for you? So to properly size this one for you, what I would do is I would wrap this around your wrist three times and sort of have a look on your wrist and see where it ends up. Now maybe you're going to end up, say, right here, and then you just maybe need another half inch. Well, if you were going to add another tube on there, that would be too much. So what I would do in that case is we're gonna give you a lot of beads in your kit. So you could do another small section of beads and that's gonna be under your wrist so nobody's gonna know that it doesn't follow the pattern. Or maybe you could add a couple more beads and make this just a little bit larger. The other thing that I would do is I would maybe put one bead on each side of the same color and then add um, a, another knot and maybe do that again and then add another knot so you'd have like another little beaded section here and then your little area for your clasp so you can add all sorts of things on the end just to extend out this bracelet just a bit more so that it fits you and you kind of have to be a bit creative and people always like to make sure that it looks exactly like mine but sometimes you have to deviate just a little bit and don't worry because again it's going to be sitting underneath your wrist and nobody's going to ever notice if it doesn't follow the exact pattern so I hope that helps explain explain a little bit about how to size this one. So the other thing that you can do is, well, if you're making it for a friend and you think, well, I don't know what her wrist size is, here's another option. You can make a, a succession of knots. So you can make a knot there, and then you could make another knot. I don't want to do it because they're so hard to take out, but I could make another knot here and another knot here. And then she could just trim this wherever she wanted. Um, I actually bought a bracelet like that in Vegas years ago, and I just left it all hanging there as it was kind of this cute little dangle. But by adding a succession of knots um, gives you options for sizing. So hopefully that gives you a few little um, ideas. So now to uh, end this one, I'm just going to put a couple of these beads on each side and now again this is yours you can do whatever you like you can leave these long for dangles or you can have them a little bit shorter I'm going to do shorter today so I'm just going to go around twice I don't want a lot of knots on there go in through the back end and pull that through and then just tighten up that knot 
and I'm going to repeat on the other side. And these are just for some little decorative dangles. And go around twice and go through the back end. So you can see by doing the 30 inches that we started off with, I'll show you how much we have left over. So that's how much we have left over. It makes it comfortable in your hand for making knots. And then we have about that much left over on the other side. So that gives you lots of leather to work with. Okay, so I wanna make sure that those are nice and snug. And then I'm gonna give that a trim. And now I'm gonna come in with my glue. And I do like to add just a little dot of glue on the end here. And then on the end of these barrel knots because these are the ones that are going to sort of take the most punishment because that's where you're going to be doing it up. So I'm just going to let that dry and I'll be right back. So here you go. Here's our completed bracelets. This one is the one that I was just finishing up with the cobalt blue and the yellow. And here's the one that I started with the um, rainbow matte mix. I just couldn't finish this one on camera, but I will try and get a picture of it. But I wanted you to see what the colors look like. And then here's the one that I have on my wrist. This is the um, smoky topaz and um, matte turquoise. I love this one, of course, because this is the color combo that I always seem to go to. But I particularly love these uh, smoky topaz Picasso beads. I think they are absolutely stunning. So this one is my favorite. So you'll have three different kit choices and they will be available on my website. You just go into the description box below the video and there'll be a little drop down button there and it'll take you directly to my a link that goes right to my website and you'll be able to purchase your own kit. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please make sure to give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment. I love to hear from everybody and please make sure to subscribe to my channel and don't forget to press that bell button. It will give you a notification when my videos are live. I want to thank you so much for watching and we'll see you on the next one.